Howdy, I'm Andy Lee with Family History Fanatics, and today we're going to be going over a tool on Family Tree DNA, and that is the Chromosome Painter. So let's head on over there and see how you can use this tool. Now, the first thing when we're looking at the home page is you'll notice that there are two similar sounding tools. There's the Chromosome Browser and there's the Chromosome Painter. We're going to focus on the Chromosome Painter today, which has to do with your admixture or ethnicity or heritage results, depending on how you use that term. Clicking on this, it's going to go to the Chromosome Painter and it's going to show your chromosomes divided out by segments that are associated with specific areas of the world. Now you'll notice here on Family Tree DNA, mine is very blue. In fact, that is really the only color except for this little tiny bit of light blue here. And that is because they have divided up their chromosome painting into what they call superpopulations. You really have two populations, superpopulations and continents. So if I move over to continent, it's basically the same thing. It's just included that Baltic into it now. And so it, everything is all one. And that is because my ancestry is pretty homogeneous. Most of my ancestors that I can trace are actually from England with some into Germany and France and the Netherlands, all Northern Europe for the most part. And that's exactly what's being reflected here. Let me go back to the superpopulation. And I'm gonna click on this help up in the corner that is being hidden by my head right now. And that is going to give us an idea of what this superpopulation is. If I go down here to superpopulation and continents, I can see your superpopulation and continental regions are determined by the results of your family finder test and coincide with your genetic makeup, which is provided to you in My Origins. So that is a separate tool, the My Origins tool. So let's go and just take a look at the version three population clustering and learning center for the My Origins tool so we can understand what is meant by this superpopulation. So we have these population clusters and I'm just going to scroll down and we can see their map of where all of their different population clusters are. And this is you know, really neat as far as seeing it. You can see actually in Europe, there are several, even though on mine, it was just showing one major color with one little minor color involved there. But as we go down further, we can see, okay, here's where they explain the continental level populations, the superpopulations, and the population clusters. First off, continental. It should be pretty self-explanatory. We're talking about continents. And in particular, they're a main region in which there are one or more superpopulations, okay? So then we go down to the po superpopulation, and this is the region in which one or more population clusters are found. So basically we have the continental region, which is made up of superpopulations, and superpopulations are made up of population clusters. This is the nomenclature that Family Tree DNA is using. As we scroll down further, we can see the list of continents, superpopulations, and population clusters. So just starting in Africa, Africa would be the continent. There is Central African, East African, Eastern Sahel, Horn of Africa, Rainforest Forager, San, South Africa, West Africa. And each one of those may have one or more population clusters. So in this case of Europe, let's scroll down and see what is in Europe. In Europe is the continent level. And we can see that Baltic is a superpopulation that is just made up of the Baltic cluster. And then the other one that I had was Western Europe. And you can see that Western Europe is made up of four population clusters. Central Europe, England, Wales, and Scotland, Ireland, and Scandinavia. And that matches all of my known ancestry as far as where almost every single one of my ancestors is from, um, one of those regions. So that is what is being shown here on this, is the continental level or the superpopulation level. It does not go down to the population clusters, although the population clusters are listed here below each one of the superpopulation. Now, a couple things with this that we can do. First off, we see that we have 22 of our autosomes there, so it does not include your sex chromosomes, the X and the Y. We can switch it from English to Spanish. Now, I'm not sure if they're going to have more languages available in the future, but right now, you have the option of changing it between English and Spanish. We can download the segments. And by clicking on this, it's going to ask us where we want to save a file, and then we can save that file. 
there is a filter here. Now the filter's got a couple of different options. First, you can see up at the top here, there is the portrait view and the landscape view. If I click on the landscape view, I have changed how these are displaying. So instead of going from top to bottom, I now have these going from left to right. And you can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and it goes all the way over. Now, depending on your screen, this is one thing to be aware of is the button to go right and left is in the middle of that. But if you're looking at some of these smaller ones on the end, you might not see that button. And so you'll just have to scroll up to get to that. Next on the filter, as we go down, there is the preference of whether you prefer to show the superpopulation or the continent first. It's default set to superpopulation, but you can change that to the preference of continent and be able to change it back to superpopulation. It's fine. You can also elect which of your superpopulations to show. So in this case, I have both Western Europe and Baltic selected. So if I click on the Western Europe so it's not showing anymore, I can go and I see that everything is now grayed out. So if I just search over here, there is my little bit of Baltic that it's showing. And that's the only little segment that I have on mine. Of course, your chromosomes may be different because the populations that your ancestry is from is most likely different from mine. Let's go back to the filter. There's also this option to show trace results only. Now trace results are really those segments that are probably smaller than what their threshold for calling it that certain population cluster is. But let's just take a look and see what trace results I have. Now I'm showing here actually one other little bit of Baltic on chromosome number six. I'm going to take off the trace results and that's showing that same one on chromosome number six. And that, so that is because this Baltic is considered less than 1%. So it's really just below their threshold. Now, as you're looking at this, one of the things you may be seeing is, hey, there's some gray spots here. So right at the beginning here, there's this gray spot on chromosome number one. On chromosome number six, there was a little gray spot. On nine, there's some gray spots. And you may be wondering, okay, what is up with those? Well, there's two things that could be going on there. First off, in several of these, for instance, when you have both of the pair of chromosomes that have that gray, that is indicating that those are areas where really no SNPs were tested. And so no evaluation of that area can be determined. Now, these regions on 13 through 15, 21 and 22, and then back here on chromosome number nine, those are actually pretty typical across all of the different companies that they don't test in those regions. On the other hand, this one on chromosome number six, you'll notice it's only on one of the chromosomes. More than likely, that is a spot that is ambiguous. In other words, the makeup of the SNPs that are in there might be indicating multiple different population clusters, or they might not be matching with any population cluster to the degree that family tree DNA wants. And so they don't report it as belonging to any one of those population clusters. Now, the next part of this tool is this detailed segments. And if we click on this, what it is now going to be showing us is basically the exact same information, except in a table format. So you can see here, mine of course is all Western Europe, but you'll notice that, hey, it's showing the different segments on each one of these chromosomes. And that is because we have a pair on each one. So you'll notice, let's just use Western Europe here on chromosome number two. It shows two of these that are spanning the exact same place. That's because there's a pair of chromosomes. So chromosome number two has one for my mother and one for my father. And both of those are showing Western Europe across the entire chromosome. On this page, we can do different things to change up what is being shown. So we can be clicking on these arrows, which will resort this by whichever one we have there. So for instance, this might be the haplotype or the chromosome or the superpopulation. We can sort by the start position. But again, this is not gonna just be chromosome one. You'll notice here, it's now starting with chromosome number 17 because that had the smallest place where the start was. We could do this by the end location as well. 
and we could do it by the CM, the centimorgans. If I scroll over here to the all the way, that last column that wasn't showing up mostly is centimorgans. And so I could actually see what the smallest or the largest of my segments is. Now, since I have primarily this Western Europe ancestry, you're not seeing segments that are much smaller than the entire chromosome. So all of my big segments are really full chromosomes that are being shown. Now, I typically don't use the chromosome painters so much for any kind of genealogical research just because it's very limited as far as the information that it is. And it is probably the most um, unreliable as far as any of the information you can get out of DNA. But it actually is the reason why I first tested on DNA is to get a chromosome painting from a different company. And I like the looks of them, um, particularly for those people who have this really varied ancestry and seeing how that DNA has all mixed together just through the color variation that you see. With family tree DNA, you're not going to see that as much because they only show superpopulations and the continental level. They don't show those individual population clusters. You'd have to go to the My Origins tool on family tree DNA to see how much is in each one of those population clusters. I hope this video was helpful for you to understand how to use the Chromosome Painter. And if you'd like to watch something else on DNA, then check out this video to my right.